we were going to have three, a, uh, but we're actually going to have four videos. Uh, so, so on this one is the third of the fourth, and it's on the industry and revolution sections of the a, um, of the chapter on the scientific revolution itself. All right, and if we look at the industry, what Harari tells us is that the scientific revolution has enabled sapiens to increase the means of extracting energy and materials from the planet so that the sapiens can increase the energy to match the ever-growing usage necessary to support our large population. So, so what he's saying is that the scientific revolution has really basically taken a Malthus basic theory of saying that, that there was going to be a point in which a, a, the population it was growing exponentially and resources were not, that they were going to cross and we were going to have a problem. And basically the scientific revolution has enabled us to, to, re, to move that problem and, and take it away. However, the Industrial Revolution has also redirected sapiens to focus solely on our own species and has created a significant disregard for the other species that we should share the planet with. So any species that we haven't been able to domesticate, uh, you know, ultimately if it goes extinct, the uh, sapiens is really not that interested in that species. Even the species that we have domesticated are treated as raw material that we can and should do with whatever advantages us. So we, we, we put the, the, the cows in small enclosures. We, we toss the chicks out that, that don't fit the criteria. Uh, we experiment with the monkeys. I mean, anything that, 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 you know, we're just not treating them as if they actually are sentient beings. What he says is the consumerism ethic that fortifies capitalism and encourages much of the attitude that we've talked about towards the planet and other species is one of the few ethics that is significantly easier to accomplish than the other ethics, like turning the other cheeks, balancing liberty and freedom, because it leverages our predilection for selfish individualism, right? We are a self-centered creature, and the consumerism ethic really fortifies our self-centeredness. Most people can successfully live up to this capitalist consumerist ideal, where it is not necessary to cultivate compassion, tolerance, and overcome craving and anger, an ideal we were never really any good at living up to anyway. Instead, the rich can remain greedy and the rest of us can give free reign to our cravings and passions and buy more and more. Luxuries become necessities. Can even, as we've seen at Easter Island, sapiens can even move to the point where, where they, they actually deplete all of the resources and, a, uh, and, and ultimately the ability to even live on the island themselves. But remember, this is all a myth, so we can change it at any time. It is all about creating a new intersubjective myth that focuses on cooperation like the bees and the ants do. So this, so, so this is not a, 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 the history, what Harari is saying, is it's not inevitable that we have to continue down this path. Then if he looks at, at you know, the revolution, right, the Industrial Revolution has redirected sapiens to focus solely on their own species and has created a significant disregard for the planet. If you look at topsoil, we lose 100 million acres a year. We create 15 million acres of desert a year. Water, we, we use 160 tons per year, more than we replenish. Right? We're losing 70% of the edible fish, the minerals, the wetlands, the ozone layer, the forest, the atmospheric balance, all of those things about the planet. I mean, we are, are really a, a disregarding any of the issues of the planet that we live on. The Industrial Revolution has turned the timetable and assembly line into a template for almost all human activity. So, so as Habermas says, that the systems that we have, that the, the systems that have been fostered by the Industrial Revolution, they, they focus on cost benefit, productivity and performance, and they lack human resonance. They, you know, they, they lack that, that other piece. Um, it, it's, we are basically focusing 100% on if it's not doesn't have a cost benefit, we can't say it adds to productivity or performance, then we're willing to throw it out. If, if we look at the Harari talks about in the pre-industrial revolution, all of these systems, the welfare system, the health system, education, the construction industry, the trade union, pensions, insurance companies, radio, information, newspaper, bank, police, the emotional factors, these are all provided by our nuclear family or our extended family and the local community. That, this is where we depended on those things for in pre-industrial revolution. Since the industrial revolution, all of those systems except for emotional functions are now provided by the market and the state. 
the, the, and, and so we have become an individual, so we're no longer, this whole idea of individualism means that we're not dependent anymore on the, on the, on the nuclear family, that, that all of these things are going to be provided by our market and our state. And, and even if you get a little bit further and you look at tribal bonds, tribal bonds have moved from, from, from being over at the nuclear family to where now, you know, we have a, a consumerism eth ethic and a nationalism ethic that takes over from the tribal. So a, again, the market and the state have, have these imagined communities that are basically performing all of the functions with the possible exception of some emotional functions that we're looking for from the nuclear extended and local community. So one of the things he talks about is that, the, that the, the, one of the goods, if you will, is that globalization of capitalism, empire, and science, that they need globalization in order to function, okay? And, and so a, a, there's no profit in war anymore, okay? Where uh, unless wealth is, is still tied to old-fashioned material wealth, that, that there's, there's no real value in, in, a, in warring. As a matter of fact, he says that the, like the threat of nuclear holocaust fosters pacifism and, and that's what he, he, he says that pacifism equals an increase in trade the trade encourages peace because there's no profit in the war and the global empire equals no reason for the war so so 